Hello, friends. <laughs> How are you guys doing? So I'm just waiting until I am actually live now. Um, waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting to see when this will be, when you guys will see this. Yes, okay, so you guys see it now. My goodness, that is a long time. I'm gonna just check. Yeah, it's like a full 30 seconds between us. So that is crazy. Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, I wanna see who's here. Um, so let's see, Armand, hello. What's my favorite flute I ever played? Uh, the one that is in the Flute Center of New York right now, getting fitted to my um, flute. Uh, so that that is my head joint. So yeah, I don't, as you can see, I don't have my like super awesome flute on me right now because uh, the head joint is getting fitted to the flute. So if you guys don't know, I did buy it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, let's see. Carlos is here. Oh, thank you for the welcome back. Blue Diamonds, Megan, uh, Oriana, hello. Magic Monkichi, hello. Um, Claire, yo Claire, do your homework. Do your homework. <laughs> music theory homework, are you, are you in music school? Um, or is this for a private, uh, private teacher? I am wondering. Are you guys proud that I actually started on time today? Oh my gosh, I'm just feeling so productive today. Uh, right before this, I actually was prepping some vegetables for John and I to cook later tonight. Um, but uh, like if I didn't prep them now, I wasn't going to have time later because I'm working all the way until 6.15. So we don't want to have our dinner too late, you know. So um, let's see. Um, Amir is here. Kane. Hey, Kane. How are you doing? Uh, Melanie. Uh, Mary Panda, hello. Uh, I believe this is a different Morgan, hello. Um, is there a t Twitch stream? Yes, there is a Twitch stream later, but it is approximately an hour and a half after this one ends. Uh, it's because I'm teaching a student in between. So yeah, just so you guys know. Um, <laughs> you guys are proud of me, I love it. Uh, Melanie got jump scared by the notification going off. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay, so, um, la, la, la. let's see. Morgan, you love music theory. Oh, Claire, it's for your private teacher. Okay, got it. Figulilu, hello, how are you doing? I recognize your, your name there. Unsphered Wings, I like that username. That is a very, very cool username. How are you doing? Um... Am I gonna put my Brandon head joint on my, on my Mateki? I could, but I would have to put a piece of tape on it and I don't really feel like doing that right now. So we're just gonna, you know, make do with this. Um, Michael, today you did a flute presentation. Uh, how did that one go? That's lovely. Anybody, everybody be ready for roll call. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Haya, how are you doing? Uh, David, hello. Rachel, hello. Um, cool. I think I'm seeing most of everyone on here now. So this is fantastic. So I wanted to um, give you guys a quick, sh uh, a quick um, uh, uh, heads up. I revamped my entire website. So if you want to have my, um, my stream schedule for Twitch, uh, for YouTube, and actually for Patreon um, in your uh, calendar, like if you use Google Calendar, um, it's actually very easy to add that uh, into your calendar just by going to my website. So go to justanotherflutist.com slash schedule and you'll see there's a little like Google agenda calendar on the bottom and you can actually press the little button like, you know, plus Google calendar at the very bottom corner of it and um, it can add it to your calendar and it will be in your time zone. I know! I know guys. So um, I was really productive last week um, to get that done, but I did not get the merchandise out yet. Um, it's There's too many things to revamp. I'm still currently revamping Twitch, uh, but I did revamp my whole website and I revamped Patreon entirely. So, um, and I created a Discord uh, 
private Discord group for just my $5 tier patrons. So if you guys want to be in on that, kind of take a peek into uh, my more personal life, um, then head on over there. And thank you if you decide to support me. Hey, Thomas, how are you doing? Hey, Emily. Hello, Kitty. <laughs> uh, we Fabulous, hello. Hey, Donna. Donna from the UK. Uh, you're trying, you're, you're moving to try to be self-taught. You know, there is no try. If you are self-taught, you are self-taught. And I highly respect you for that. That is fantastic. I hope you're enjoying the flute. Um, the website schedule, oh, does it still not um, sync? Because it's syncing to other people's now. So um, I redid the time zones in the calendar and I re-embedded it and re-uploaded it. So go and check it again and see if it's in your time zone. I don't know. Um, I'm, I probably still have to play around with it a little bit, but you know, yay. Um, so lovely, lovely. Okay, so that's kind of the big update there. Um, and let's see. So I wanted to, you know how normally I start out with chatting with you guys, you know, um, and then, uh, and then I get to playing the flute. Well, for today, that's not really going to work because, um, I need to start playing now and play a lot and make this flute extremely slobbery. Okay. Like we want to get to the point where it is like leaking out the end. Okay. So that I can try this guy. So um, this, if you guys didn't see my first uh, attempt at trying out this Helix wand, um, uh, you should go check that out. Um, I had like a so-so experience with it, but it's cause I didn't wash it. The previous owner of this did wash it, but didn't soak it. So this time I, uh, on my week off, I soaked this um, so that everything was very wet for a while, uh, soaked it in soapy water, um, and then I rinsed it out really well and then dried it uh, completely. So I have not tried it since last time because I wanted to try it in front of you guys. So um, that's the plan for today. We are going to spend like an hour or so playing the crap out of my flute so that it gets really slobbery. And then we're gonna try this again. We're gonna use a slightly different technique than we did last time. Last time we just like, you know, jammed it all the way up. No, you know, no particular technique. But what I figured out last time was that you need to like slowly twist it as you push it upwards so that um, the bristles, like all these little bristles can, um, can, uh, uh, absorb the water. So the hope this time is that it absorbs it better because hopefully I've activated the material to be more absorbent by soaking it in soapy water, rinsing it and letting it dry. So, uh, this is the helix. This is the helix wand. So if you take it out of the, uh, the, the little, uh, plastic, uh, cover here, it looks like this. Let me just show you guys with um, a close up here. There we go. So um, just going to focus that on there. Yeah. So it looks like this. Um, and what you'll notice is that at least what I notice, let's try to do a big close up here. OK, so. Uh, 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 OK, so do you see how inside there's like little coils? So the. Each layer of these like little helix petals is separated by a like, like a plastic little ring. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. Yeah. So I, th I, th I think you, uh, there in focus now. So, um, there you see those little plastic rings in between the petals. So, um, Th that's pretty interesting. I, I found that, uh, like, I didn't really notice that until later on. So there's these little petals. And then the idea is that you can pass this through your flute in one shot and it will completely dry it. So that is the hope, my dears. That is the hope. And we will see if that, you know, if that actually happens this time. Hello, I'm back here again. Okay, 
So we're going to pop my microphone over here so you guys can see um, all of me. And I'm just gonna find some random things to sight read. Um, I'm gonna keep going through the list that we've got going uh, for a while now. So uh, let me just open up my OneNote. All right, so let's look at OneNote to see what I've got going on here. So uh, I think it's, this is better if I do date created. Okay, so uh, I think I'm going to take out the Nutcracker because I don't think there's like a flute only part for it. But it looks like we wanted to do I think we did some of Beef Tank Wings, but uh, Curler Opus 66 sounds like a really fun one to play a bunch out of. So I'm gonna try doing that right now. So let's look it up. Curler Opus 66, 25 romantic etudes. I feel like I started playing some of this, right? Yeah. I should try some League of Legends themes. Uh, okay, um, my favorite one is Dragon Trainer Tristana, so I would not mind figuring that out in front of you guys. But we're trying to make this slobbery, okay? So I need to be just constantly playing, like constantly playing. So with figuring out music, I tend to kind of stop and go, stop and go. So I might save that for another time. Uh, we'll put that over here, like, so we'll put Dragon Trainer Tristana. Uh, if you guys haven't heard that theme, just look up Dragon Trainer Tristana on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, probably the other one that I want to figure out is, and I think I figured it out a little bit of it. It's a Nami's theme. So what's it called? Tide Collar. That one is really good too. So those are both themes from League of Legends. Um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you guys really like classical music, so there, um, you don't even have to play the game to enjoy it, but there is the League of Legends Volume 1 um, OST, um, and it's uh, original soundtrack, and it's, it's so good. It's for free, you don't have to pay, it's just free online. So just look up, look up League of Legends Volume 1 you know, soundtrack, you'll find it. It's great. Um, I might have used one of the tracks for my bridal processional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I did. I am that kind of nerd. Okay, so I definitely think we did number one from the Romantic A2s. So, yeah, I did a few of these, didn't I? I feel like I did one, two, and three. They look familiar to me. So, I'm going to try from number four. Does that sound good with you guys? Do I play League of Legends? Yes, I do. I do play League of Legends. <laughs> that would explain the misfortune little pop figure over there. Also, I have Kogma, because he might be ugly, but I kind of think he's ugly cute, if that makes sense. Yes. So. Um, I'm going to play, uh, just, I'm just going to sight read through a bunch of music right now. So let's sight read through, um, the, uh, number four of 25 romantic etudes by Curler, Opus 66. All right. That is what's going on, Panda. Um, <clears throat> all right, here we go. Let's try this out. Someone is requesting Chaminade. I've done Chaminade for a while. Um, oh, Zoe's theme. I really should listen to Zoe's theme. I haven't really listened to it much, so I don't really know it. Yeah, but I only play Aram. Yes, that's true. I only play Aram. <laughs> Summoner's Rift scares me. And then Ranked is just not something I even try to touch. Um, so, okay, here we go. So this is Consolation. Did I play this? I feel like I played this already. <laughs>
definitely played this. But since we're already playing it, let's keep going. side of the camera I totally am aren't I so I'm I'm sorry guys uh give me a moment to just kind of move that there then yeah I'll be more in the middle there okay I think that's a little better unfortunately we're gonna chop misfortune off yeah that's better isn't it yeah okay so by Monty. Why do I feel like I've played, I've read this? Is there arrangements and transcriptions? Is there an arrangement for flute? For flute, oboe, violin, and piano. For piano, for okay. Um, okay. There's a version on flute tunes. Should I try that one? I've done this before. This looks very familiar, but I'll do it again. Um, okay. Uh, well, since I have played the the thing that I just did, the the etude that I just did, I feel like I should do maybe two more. Let's do two more. Yeah. Okay. So this is number five from Opus sixty six Curler.
forward to. My sound on this has gotten much more in in depth and fuller. Ha has it? I yeah. So I I am weirdly from getting a head joint that fits me really well. It has weirdly made me a little bit more conscious of the type of manipulation I need to do in my mouth. So um, I'm pretty pleased with that, <laughs> to be completely honest. Well, thank you, GJ. Thank you. Uh, yo, yo, I wouldn't say I top Jasmine. No, 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 no. X, X, <laughs> no. Jasmine, man, Jasmine, mm. that lady is like freaking like unreal. She's unreal as a flutist. Like I'm, I'm just like, why are you so amazing and effortless and talented and beautiful? Like I, <clears throat> yeah, that's how I feel about Jasmine. My goodness. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. <laughs> okay, I'll think of that magic one, Kichi. All right, one more. One more from this, and then maybe let's do something else. So let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, got it. that again. without taking the flute away. <laughs> should I should I put that on a shirt too? Like have a little excerpt and be like, guy, I hate this. <laughs> um Yeah, you know, Jane, you're you're not the only person who's saying that. Um Magic Monkiji is saying that too. Right? I think it's like I have a better awareness of the types of manipulation that I can do in my mouth now. Um, now that I understand what my actual natural state is, you know? Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's enough of um, Opus 66. So let's close that. We're going to look at Chartist. I feel like I've done this before, but I just didn't write it down. Hey, Caleb, of course I remember you. How are you doing? It has been a while. How, and you've been doing okay? Hey, Catalina. How are you doing? Okay, this is Chartis by Vittorio Monti. Uh, let's see if I remember. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. <laughs>
a roll and tondo like crazy. I, I, I think that's how it's supposed to go, right? Okay, let's see. By the way, I also love Pusheen. A gliss head joint would be perfect for this piece. I know, right? Oh, it would make this piece real sexy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I don't know how accurate I did that. I'm only, I'm doing it like slightly from my memory of how this piece goes, but like I haven't heard this piece in a long time actually. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, okay, I've definitely done this on stream before. Um. done this on stream. Also looking at my own stream. <laughs> um, maybe refresh the page. Okay. Um. Oh, oh, P. 
cue presto. Uh, whoops. Okay. Uh. Mm. to thank you personally because I, I I recognize your name from Patreon <laughs> so yeah my um, my yeah my flutes in uh, New York uh, with my new head joint to get fitted to it so that's why I'm on my silver flute hey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh excuse me it's major Thank you, Santiago. Um, and oh, thank you for saying that the sound quality of the stream is amazing. I do very much appreciate that you guys can hear that difference because um, I, uh, just so you guys know, I am running on three different microphones right now. So there's this one, which is the up close one, but then you're also hearing the natural reverb of the room because I have two more uh, stick microphones uh, on the corners of the room. So that way you, you get to hear the flute in like the most IRL version possible that I can do through the internet. So um, I did this partially for my students actually, so I can teach um, more effectively online. Um, I have been exclusively teaching online for like six years now. Um, so I've been wanting this setup for a really long time. I wasn't able to do it until like March. Yeah, like February, March-ish. Um, February, I think, was when I started ordering everything, which was right before the COVID um, lockdown. Uh, so I was very lucky to get all this stuff in. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Doug. Um, and yes, Jane, your messages are going through. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Um, am I with the Flute Center of New York? Uh, kind of. I'm partnered with them. So I'm my own business, um, but I partner with them to do reviews and stuff like that. Real fun stuff for you guys. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so that was fun. Um, now what I want to do, um, let's look at more of this stuff here that we wanted to do. Uh, so there was Wings by Beef Tank. Um, yeah, why not? Let's do that one again. Because I, I feel like I didn't quite get uh, get to do all of it last time. So... Um, da, yeah, so Wings Flute Solo. So I'm going to uh, just kind of do this on mute. I just need to make sure that you guys aren't hearing those speakers. Yeah, okay, sweet. So... Take a look at this. All right, here we go. So, wings. All right, let's see. So. Okay, so. Thank <laughs> you. 
Center of New York right now because they are um hi double click how are you doing um um yeah but uh the flute center of New York is fitting my um my head joint to my new head joint to my flute so they need the whole thing you know to fit it right so anyway um <laughs> vibrato I guess match what the what what the music wants you know so this is very like a uh, shimmery type of vibrato that I'm doing um, so <laughs> I didn't realize that there's no rest there. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Oh. so many sharps is because this is now G sharp minor ish something like that instead of G minor oh okay that musically completely wrong. Poco a cello rondo and then writ. Okay. Probably closer to what it is. That's probably closer. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Okay. <laughs> I am totally 
butchering some of this. I hope you guys know. <laughs> that butcher that so hard Yeah. 
Yeah, this is a nightmare for a sight reading. Do you? Yeah, I, I do agree, Amir. Oh, the sharps, man. The sharps. But I can see how if you like practice this and you know this really well, that this would be absolutely stunning. Oh, just stunning. Okay, well, I sight read it, so we're going to put it in here that we uh, sight read it. Okay. How's my flute doing? We're getting we're getting damp. We're getting damp, but I think we can get damper. So let's let's uh, let's do some more. So drew a flute etudes. Um, I'm guessing it's from the seventy two studies for the bem flute. So I am going to take a look at this. What is the name of the last song? Uh, so uh, it's Wings by Herman Beef Tink. So go check him out. He's uh, so got some real good stuff. Um, if you just look up Beef Tink, you'll find him. Sharps, sharps. <laughs> How is Paul doing? He's doing very well, as far as I know. Um, He's been, you know, sending me cute dog photos. He has a dog. And then she's real cute. But it seems like he's doing well. <laughs> Jane, your girl just told me that, told you that we've been on COVID lockdown from school for 10 weeks. You'll never complain about the six week summer holidays ever again. <laughs> I know, isn't it wild? Um, so my husband has been home, working from home with me now since like the second week of March, I think. And we are at the end of May now. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. You're always gonna, you're, you're always here for the big burger. Oh, you're welcome, and Weird Wings. You're welcome. Okay, I know, right? Oh my gosh, this dog is so cute. Okay, um, let's look at this. Drew Way. I have not done a lot of Drew Way myself, I feel. Oh, wait, wait, wait. These are like the really short studies that turns into like longer and longer stuff. Are these really the ones that you're looking for? I mean, it is in C major. Wait, let me look up something else. So drew a method for the flute. Is it that one? Opus, I'm gonna guess it's this one. All right, I'm looking at a different part. Um, numbers one to three. One numbers, or part one, numbers one to 31. Uh, so there's part one, part three, and part four on IMSLP, but not part two. That is so odd. But there's a complete book too, so I'm looking at that as well. Hmm. How strange. Oh, this looks like it's a real big file. Oh, hello. Oh, this is the complete method. Okay, I wonder if he has, does he have like etudes in here? He has duets. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, 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 oh wait, wait, wait. These look like etudes. So he has, yep, this looks like it's in C major. So let's look at this one. This is the fourth part. So the fourth part of his book, he has number one. It is in C major, so let's just try this one. Um, so this is Drew Way, A2. Mm. 
let's scroll at this convenient spot. bars that is um, like kind of a bit of a mind twister there so right there for a second believe that that's a G natural. Uh, oh, ooh, trills, okay. Of surprise although it, it's really funny you can kind of hear he has a very like particular way of composing it, it all kind of sounds very similar like this is number three <laughs> Yeah. 
carry through. Kind of sound the same yeah am I circularly breathing no I'm not circularly breathing I think I'm just breathing in such a way that you're just not noticing me breathing I definitely am not circular breathing <laughs> um all right all right you know what we're you know what we're, we're, we're done with we're done with those etudes how how is my how's my flute doing I feel like it can get even damper Oh, 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 wait. Yes! Friends, it is leaking out the bottom. So, uh, this is perfect timing because what I wanted to do was take some time to do this now. So we're, the, the, we are in officially part two of this stream. So we are gonna try this out and then we'll see what we think. And then I was thinking that after I am done, uh, swabbing this out and giving you guys my next thoughts about this, then I was going to take a little tea break, make some tea, come back and have tea with you guys for the rest of the time. How does that, how does that sound? Yeah? Thank you for saying that I have amazing breath control. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, it's, it's one of those things that is very weird to learn it's weird to learn it's not hard per se but it's weird because um part of learning to breathe like to control your breath uh is fighting that fight or flight mode in your head right because breath is so breathing breath is so um important to being alive, you know? And when you start to control that aspect of being alive, your brain all, a lot of times will go into like fight or flight mode. So you almost kind of have to train your body into being like okay with holding, like controlling your breath like that. So it is a weird skill. It's very weird. I, I, I still think it's weird. It's also very weird to teach too, because I find that I have to like, learn how to verbalize how it feels to do it yeah <clears throat> um you are honored that you guys are my friends you guys are my friends though like i'm spending so long with you guys you know okay so um i'm gonna find the other part of this so i can swab the whole thing give me a second guys it's right here somewhere, so. Oy. Okay, here we go. I got it. So, we are going to now put the whole thing together. And again, just to review with you guys how I'm going to swab this out, okay? Um, we're gonna go slowly up, but also twist as we go, okay? So hopefully, that will um that will like swab everything out and we're seeing if soaking it and activating like i want to see if soaking it with dishwashing liquid and water um and then rinsing it out afterwards uh i want to see if that helps activate the material here oh uh give me a second here okay so let's see let's see okay here we go Okay, I feel like, hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let me see how we look here. Okay, all right, we're gonna try it this way and then maybe I'll show you a, cl a close up of how disgusting this is. Okay, so we're going in slowly while also 
turning. So, trying this, trying this. Hello, Paul, how are you? Um, you want this bag, Magic Monkichi? It is the Flitter Scooter Cedar Wood bag, I believe it is. Um, I treated myself a few years ago and was like, I'm kind of tired of the like the overkill pat black patent leather looking bag. I want something that doesn't look quite so, I guess, high fashion. Like I wanted something that would match my more like homey clothes, you know, and stuff like that. So, oh, okay, you know what? Something very interesting this time. So this time I played until this was leaking out the end. But if you guys notice, let me actually put a little close up here for you. Close up time. Okay, if you look in here, and I'll focus on there. There we go. So we'll zoom up real close and we'll focus. There we go. Okay, so um, you, you will notice as I turn this, sorry, I'm trying to like find a lighting. Okay, there. If I turn this, you'll notice that the, there's no light bouncing off of moisture inside. Interesting, right? Because last time it was like overflowing out of here. Like you could clearly, like if I went like this, you would clearly see um, like light reflecting off of the water. But I'm not seeing that at all. That is incredible. That is incredible. So um, let me move you guys back to this one. Okay, so zoom that back out. Focus it back. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think it's working. I think it's working, guys. I mean, I'm still like twisting it, but okay, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna pull it out now. Again, slowly but surely. Wow, that is dry. It's working, guys. It's working. So I'm twisting, twisting and taking it out all right all right all right moment of truth that is really dry guys so it's like only a tad bit wet and i think it's because this thing is so wet but it it worked it worked that this this worked this worked seltzer water 101 by the way i do love seltzer water uh great name um not as wet but this thing was leaking out the end just like last time like it's it's really absorbed it aha uh -huh. guys so again let's do another close-up so, can you guys see how like it doesn't really look wet? Here, I'm trying to focus on it. I'm sorry guys, give me a second here. Come on, there we go. Um, you see how it doesn't really look wet? Like it's a little damp, like it's damp around here where I'm kind of touching it, but it doesn't look wet, wet, right? That's very unlike the last time I tried this very unlike the last time I tried this. So guys, I can tell you this definitely works if you pre-treat this. So you need to pre-treat this thing, okay, for this to work. You can see in my first attempt at using this that it did not really work. So, okay guys, it's good, it worked. I'm bringing us back to the scene here. All right, guys, it worked. Okay, what time is the Twitch stream? It is 5.15 my time, 5.15 Pacific. So yeah, in two hours. So um, I, I'm, I'm pretty shook. I'm pretty shook. Yeah, I, it's definitely damp, right? But it's not like, 
wet. Like last time I went like this and like it all came off on my hand. Whereas this time it's not. I'm just gonna take a look at my flute again. Yeah, and now it's completely dry. All right, guys. So it does work, okay? So here we go. Um, this is, this totally does work in one pass. That is incredible. But you have to keep in mind that you need to pre-treat it properly first. So you have to actually soak it. So, you know, fill up your sink or fill up a really tall glass with soapy water. Uh, so dishwashing liquid and like lukewarm water and then stick it in, let it soak completely through. So what I did was I had it soaking in my laundry room sink uh, and I just had it soaking there while I was dealing with other laundry. So I was like de dealing with all the other laundry and stuff like that. And then I came back to this, uh, you know, uh, drained away the soapy water and then rinsed it under water like a few times just to make sure that um, all the soap was uh, out of the petals here. So I did that and then I just let it sit out in my laundry room to dry for like, I think it took fully like two days for it to dry, but it could be that it's just my place might be a little bit more humid, um, especially because there were other clothes drying in that room too. So it was a little bit humid in there, um, but it did take a little bit of time for this to dry all the way through. Um, at the same time that I did that, I also did the same thing to my flute flag and to my piccolo flag, which is here, I believe. Yeah, so I did it also to, he to these guys. And I noticed that these guys, it had the same effect on these guys. If you wash these guys in the same way, you soak them uh, for like a few minutes and then you rinse them, it really does like reactivate the absorbency of it. And it really, I noticed, because I've been using this one um, for the past couple of days that I've been back at work. Um, and this has worked really well. So. Uh, better than before because I actually washed it. So um, I do recommend that if you guys have the flags and if you have the helix wand, I think on top of uh, soaking it properly with um, soapy water and then rinsing it before the first time you use it, I think in order to for it to continue to absorb properly, you have to do it every now and then. I wasn't doing it on these ones and they started to basically just wipe water around instead of actually absorbing it. So I realize now I really should have been washing these. I really should have been, I haven't been. So don't be like me, okay? Wash them every now and then. I would say it kind of depends on how often you use these. Um, now I use these all the time because like I'm constantly teaching and demonstrating things and blah, blah, blah. Like this is my work. So, you know, I use these all the time. Um, now let's talk about the pricing of this. This thing is pretty expensive. Um, actually this is also expensive. So, um, I think this thing including the extension was like $55 or something like that. So pretty pricey if you don't use this all the time. Okay. So, um, this was generously donated to me by one of my students. So thank you. But, um, Yes, Jane was the one who sent me the directions for this one. So the apparently you need to apply the directions for um, using this to this, all right? So yeah, you can't just wash it in running water with soap. Like you can't just soap it and then run it. No, you have to soak it. So it has to be like, you, you either put it in a tall glass, right? To save some water or you just, you know, soak it in your sink, you know, just let it soak for a few minutes in soapy water, you know? So yeah, well worth it, Jeff, you use yours all the time. Yeah. So soak and rinse and dry uh, regular silk cloths. Yes, same thing with, uh, you should do that. Um, but I am lazy and I just put these in with my the rest of my laundry. So I put this one and microfiber polishing cloths in with my laundry and it it's great it wipes up more stuff if you do it more regularly this is more absorbent if you wash this more regularly these ones can just go in your regular laundry just with everything else um and i find that again this thing also absorbs a lot better if you uh, like wash it regularly so 
Yeah, but these ones don't don't stick these ones in the washing machine. Okay, it's just you know lazy. Okay, so you can just put this in the in the washing machine. Uh, the one type of polishing cloth you cannot put in the washing machine because it will not do anything are these ones. Okay, I know this looks really disgusting. Okay, but so this thing is um like this is designed for you to just use it until it dies and then you throw it away um this yellow part on the inside um has it it, it will pick up um grime and then this part is a little bit softer and then this part will wipe off the grime so you can see how disgusting this is i've had this since i was a child um so these ones are not meant to be washed if you find these ones these ones are not very popular these days though though because they really aren't as um eco-friendly as microfiber polishing cloths so i highly recommend that you guys buy these ones if these ones are not already included with your flute i noticed that uh lower model flutes uh, now a lot of them have microfiber polishing cloths that are included in this in, you know in the whole set so that's really cool. I really love that, you know, we're we have moved towards mostly these. But if you happen to have one of these, these ones are not meant to be washed at all. OK, so. Hi, Chris, how are you doing? Yeah. Hey, yeah, you just dropped in. Yes, yes. Just nod your head yes to everything I'm saying. Chris is a, a, a friend in real life, so <laughs> this stuff is like all you know, my flute stuff. Um, yeah. Are the Helix Wand petals softer after they've been washed? Yes, yes, it is much softer. Um, I, I'm so sorry that I can't like really show you because it looks the same, but I have to say they are much, much softer. I noticed that like when I ran my hand like this after it had fully dried, I was like, wow, that's really soft. So it, there's no way this is gonna scratch your flute at all. So mm -hmm, this is definitely softer now, now that it's been soaked. But uh, the previous owner of this did wash it, but didn't soak it. So now we know, now we know guys, you can't just wash it like this and then think that's good enough. No, no, you gotta soak it, okay? Yeah, <laughs> impregnated with silver polish. Uh, what these oh interesting is that why they feel the way that they feel like they, they it's kind of like it's, it's like a weird texture you know um yeah you're wearing marching band shoes to go walk and get used to them again that's a good idea actually that's a good idea um okay guys so I think it is time for me to take a little tea break so um it shouldn't take me too long to make a tea uh, maybe just like 10 minutes or so. So um, I will be back in 10 to 15 minutes. I just need a little break to make some tea and go freshen up, go to the bathroom, all that good stuff. And then I wanted to just have tea with you guys. So um, if you guys have any questions that you guys want to know anything about my music life, stuff like that, um, please get your questions ready, okay? Um, I would love to sit and talk with you guys until I have to go. So I will be, uh, the end of the stream will be at 3.45 my time. It is currently 2.52 my time. Um, so like a little less than an hour, but okay. Does that sound good with you guys? Yes, snack break, okay? So I will see you guys in just a little bit, okay? Hang tight, I'll be back with the tea.
for letting me know that there was no music during the waiting um, screen because um, I had it playing through the wrong track. So um, yeah, it's fixed now, so it should be good. But thank you for letting me know. I do appreciate it. I, um, I reformatted my computer um, earlier this week. And so, um, you know, I decided that while that was happening that I would kind of fiddle with the, um, you know, the, what should we call it, the controls and stuff here. Um, and I think I fiddled with it a little bit too much. So, yeah. Um, now, um, Carlos has a great question to start off our little tea chat right now. Um, so you're asking if I'm more of a coffee person or, or a tea person. To be completely truthful, I'm more of a coffee person, but it is terrible for my skin. So as you guys can already see, I am still dealing with breakouts and stuff like that. I'm 30 and I am still dealing with breakouts. So it's more to do with my diet than anything and coffee does not help. But I actually enjoy coffee more than tea, but I am making a tea right now just to kind of, because tea is not quite as, um, uh, you know, uh, inflammatory as uh, coffee is. So that's why I try to have tea on the weekdays and then I save my weekends to have coffee. So. It's really unfortunate. I used to drink like two cups of coffee a day, something like that. Yeah, like I used, and before that I was, it was even worse. I was doing like five cups a day when I was in university. Don't do that, by the way. Don't do that. Do not drink five cups of coffee a day. It is not good for your health. I can, I can attest to that. So, um, what do you mean I'm 30? Right, right, because this Saturday um, I, is my internet birthday, guys. So um, my my internet birthday um, is uh, uh, on, uh, on Saturday. So this Saturday I will do a special stream um, here where I'm, I'm just going to be hanging out with you guys, really. It's just a birthday stream of me doing whatever the heck I want. So I might not be taking sight reading requests. I probably will be playing music that I want to play because um, it's my internet birthday. Now, the reason why we say it is my internet birthday is because for some unknown reason, famousbirthdays.com has been asking me for my birthday for a few years now. And um, I finally decided to go check their, their little profile on me. And um, it says they put a placeholder birthday for me. So their placeholder birthday is May 30th, 1993. So you know what, guys? Because I don't want to tell everyone my birthday because I personally feel it's very private information, um, so, but I mean, you guys seem that you guys seem to want to celebrate a birthday with me. So, you know what? We're going with famous birthdays placeholder birthday for me, which is May 30th. And I am planning on celebrating that every year now, May 30th. <laughs> it's my internet birthday. <laughs> yeah. And they say I'm from Canada too. <laughs> It's really great. So, you know what? We're just going with it. You know, like that that is, you know, that's on the internet and whatever's on the internet stays on the internet, you know? So, yeah. Um, Carlos, five cups a day is your minimum. Oh, no. Um, it's, it's really not that great for you. Um, at, or, well, here's the thing, is that I used to have like my five cups would be two cups of like regular drip coffee and then I might have like one or two like double shot Americanos or something like that. Like it was kind of ridiculous how many shots of espresso I would have a day. Um, it was very expensive and it's not good for your health. So and for me because my body doesn't process um, like inflammatory foods and drinks very well. 
um, I really should only be having coffee like two or three times a week, not two or three times a day. So um, I also have restarted my workout uh, routine. So, um, you know, not going crazy. I'm just doing some light weights and stuff like that. We bought a dumbbell system with a, a, you know, a workout bench and stuff like that. So um, I've started that again and I've noticed even just from doing one workout that my skin is just a little happier and not that it's completely healed, but it just feels happier, you know? I think for those of you who have bad skin, I think you guys know what I mean by like you have a happy skin day, you know, where you can feel like your skin is really nice. So anyway, I wanted to answer another question that Oriana had here, which is, is the Chris that we saw in the day of a concert part two the same Chris who pops in? No, it is not. It is a different Chris. Um, there are a lot of people named Chris, but uh, no, they are not the same uh, people. <laughs> Um, I did make a really fun video with that Chris though. So that Chris, I made the, is it a composer or is it pasta video? And I loved it, but then YouTube decided to demonetize that. I don't know why, but they decided to demonetize it. So, but it's a really fun video if you guys have not seen that. Um, it's, it's like one of those, like, it was like a throwaway idea that turned into something hilarious. So <laughs> that's a great one. Um, Who's from Canada? Michael's from Canada. Fantastic. <laughs> Darcy, if it's on the internet, it must be the truth. Yes. <laughs> uh, Leonardo, hello from Switzerland. Oh my goodness. I hope you're having a lovely evening. I do believe it is the evening for you right now. Probably late evening, eh? Ah. Uh. <clears throat> ah. Oh. I see we have some Torontonians in here. Um, I have quite a few friends who are from Toronto um, and we, we play games together and stuff like that. So my, my friend group on Discord is like a bunch of them are from Toronto and then they're kind of scattered around Canada, basically. Canada and like Pacific Northwest of uh, the United States. So, uh, all right. Questions though, tell me more, ask me more questions. And while you guys ask me more questions, um, I would prefer if they're more like, you know, music flute related. Um, but while, while I wait for your questions to come in, um, I want to report to you guys, and I reported this to my Twitch peeps already, but um, I beat Final Fantasy VII Remake and I cannot tell you how freaking proud of myself I am. <laughs> I beat it, albeit with a lot of coaching from my husband, but I did beat Final Fantasy VII Remake. It is a wonderful game. I'm still not over it. I'm kind of in denial that I that I beat it. So I, um, I now have gone back to do a bunch of chapters over and over and over again so I can see every single dress. If you guys have played or are playing the game, I think you guys know what I mean when I say that. So I have now seen every single dress. I've now also seen every single cutscene in chapter 14, because you can get three different cutscenes depending on the choices that you make um, throughout the game. So after you beat the game, it unlocks chapter select where you can select different chapters to complete again to kind of change your um, your uh, decision making throughout the game. So yeah, <laughs> thank you Magic Monkichi. Um, so, you know, um, <clears throat> did I see your question for earlier? I, Oriana, I did, did I not answer it? I thought it was about the Chris, right? Um, so yeah, Magic Monkichi, you restarted Trials of Mana in hard mode, yo. Yo, dude, last night I restarted, um, or two nights ago, I think now, I restarted, what oh, was it last night? I can't remember. It must have been just last night. I also restarted Final Fantasy VII Remake on hard mode. Um, so I've now beaten the first chapter. It's definitely harder, um, but like, like the bosses are harder, but the, um, the the like the the minions and whatever like the normal enemies are they're not that bad but uh yeah the the 
the bosses are definitely harder. I also made it harder on myself because I forgot to take in healing. So I just had prey, um, which does not heal as much. <laughs> I had heal and I had revive and arise. So um, that was all I had. I definitely made the boss fight harder for myself, but I did it. I did it anyway. I didn't want to restart it, so I just pushed through until I beat him. Anyway, okay, all the questions are coming in now. So let me see. Um, at what point in a student's development do I recommend they upgrade their flute? Ah, that's a very interesting question. Um, so you kind of have to feel it out, right? So um, I will listen for um, how their tone has been developing. I will also listen um, to like all basically keep track of how advanced their music is getting because depending on um, how difficult your music is it's going to get harder and harder to um, execute the stuff on the page with ease because um, the lower the model the flute is the harder it is it actually um, to to play something with like full um, uh, like resonance full sound you know like it, it because that range right that range of like moving your airstream back and forth or moving your jaw back and forth is like it's crazy to do it on a beginner model flute so at a certain point it legit you can feel the flute fighting you and not wanting to be so flexible so I guess it's when I can hear that they're starting to have problems with flexibility is when I will typically ask them if they are considering looking for another head joint or another flute, you know? So it, I'm sorry that I couldn't give more of a, like a definite answer for that one, but it is quite vague because it kind of depends on the student, you know? Uh, but it's sort of a combination of how they sound and what they're playing, I, I guess is a good concise answer um hey fadley how are you doing uh what is the most beautiful flute concerto okay leonardo so you are i'm guessing you're asking for my opinion right my opinion of what's the most beautiful flute concerto i don't know there's like there's there's some real good ones um I think I, mm, most beautiful. I will tell you my favorite. How about that? I know some people wouldn't think it's really beautiful, but the one that pops in my head first thing is the Golden Flute Concerto by Chen Yi. Um, it it's, doesn't sound nice per se, but it has a lot of influences from the Chinese flute. And um, I, I feel like that concerto is a really great representation of me. It's kind of like a combination of my heritage, which is Chinese, and um, you know, how I've grown up, which is that I've grown up in, um, you know, the Western part of the world. So, you know, English speaking, blah, blah, blah. So I definitely feel like that concerto is kind of a really good mix of my heritage and, you know, and what I'm familiar with, with classical music. So um, I guess just, you know, in my own opinion, I really like that one and I find it really beautiful because I guess it's because I identify with it and hearing something like a musical representation of me is quite stunning in my opinion um, because I think there there is a thing where like you know you listen to Mozart concertos you listen to you know all, all the different concertos out there even the Nielsen concerto is amazing it's unfinished but it is quite amazing that was the other one that I was thinking of to say um, but you know like even the Ebert and stuff like that the thing is all of those concertos um, I, I kind of feel are like definitely written from sort of like a very Western perspective 
And um, there is always a part of me that cannot identify with it because I am ethnically Chinese. So um, there's something very beautiful about a concerto that um, has that bit of Chinese heritage in it, you know? So I hope that was a good answer to your question, Leonardo. That definitely is just my opinion, though. Um, favorite solo piece to play? So you mean flute solo? Or um, like a... Mm, So in terms of to play, favorite solo piece to play. So what are my go-tos? Um, I, hmm. So if you guys look at my Twitch streams on the week that I was trialing my head joint, you'll see a bunch of the ones that I gravitate towards. Um, and they end up being, well, I did play the Golden Flute Concerto. Um, and then I ended up really enjoying playing, like I, I forgot how much I enjoyed it, but I really liked playing Histoire du Tango by Piazzolla. There was something very charming about that piece. Um, and very, you know, like, uh, expressive, very emotional. Um, yeah, a little flirty, uh, sassy. Um, it's just all the emotions wrapped into one. So, yeah. Um, in terms of to play, that's a really fun one to play. Yeah. I'll go with that, Histoire du Tango. Because I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking about like the difference between loving to hear something versus loving to play something. I definitely had a lot of fun playing the Histoire du Tango, especially on my new head joint. Because I, I just feel like I can actually do what I want, you know? What's the best wind instrument? Why is it the saxophone? I mean, my dear, I think you just answered your own question. <laughs> I will say, um, let me tell you guys a story of, um, there was a saxophonist, I remember, um, who was a few years older than me, I think, because I, I remember being just like a freshman in university, and um, our band um, was, our wind ensemble was playing a very like saxophone heavy piece, where it's like very jazzy and stuff like that, and the saxophonist just went off, like went off in a good way, like um, oh my gosh, it was, I, I, I remember watching him like work the crowd and like just having a ton of fun and I just was like, oh my gosh, this guy kicks ass. Like this guy is amazing. So I, um, I think after that experience watching that saxophonist just like go to town on his solo and like work the crowd, I was just like absolutely enamored. Um, there's another guy um, who uh, we brought in to play the saxophone for a piece in, um, in Enzyme Symphony. And he had this gorgeous saxophone that was like black. And then it was like um, all of the, uh, there were like these beautiful intricate designs all over the instrument uh, in gold. So, oh, it was, so beautiful to just look at. On top of that, that dude was an amazing saxophonist. So I didn't even know that saxophones like that existed, that you can have it like black with like gold, you know, like I guess it's like basically it's like, I think it's some sort of like um, enamel or something like that. I don't know what it is, but it's black and then the designs on it are like intricate and they're all, it's like brass colored basically. Oh, crazy. So I love that, that one. That, that was absolutely fantastic. Hello, Damaris. How are you doing? Um, okay, so I'm going through the questions here. 
Imagine Monkichi. I am kind of going crazy. I did every single side quest in Final Fantasy VII Remake and then got every dress, uh, got every cutscene. Now I just feel like I just don't want to put the game down. So that's why I'm doing it on hard mode too because then I can get all the manuscripts. So uh, doing it on hard mode, I at this point, I might as well 100% it. Like, I might as well 100% it. I, I think this might be the first game I ever played that I 100%. Um, which out of all the games that you can 100%, why this one, right? This one's like, it, it can get pretty tedious after a while. Um, but I love it. I just love it. I just don't want to stop playing it, you know? Mm. Mm. Okay, Jaden. Hello, Jaden. How are you doing? Uh, does a thumb port help with reaching low notes because you don't have a thumb port and sometimes your finger slides off the open holes when you go for low C and B? Okay, definitely for me it does. Um, let's see if I can show you. Um, I'll do a little, I'll go to my close up page. There we go. So let's put this away. Okay, so the thing to keep in mind is that my hand here, if you look at it, there we go. Yeah, if you look at it, you'll see that my thumb is pretty short compared to other people's, okay? So because it's so short, I need an extension so that my thumb can even reach the flute. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you like this. I'm gonna have it there, okay. So if this wasn't here, my thumb would have to reach further out this way. You see how what it does to my hand, right? Right. Instead of having this like lovely relaxed feel, but you see how it, I don't touch the flute this way, I would end up having to play like this, which then I'll show you from this angle now. <clears throat> so um, if I'm if my thumb has to be all the way back here, and I end up with this kind of claw, right? then it is it does make it quite a bit harder to reach out this way right and you see you see can, you can actually see my fingers like slipping right so with the thumb port it acts as an extension so that my thumb can be actually behind the flute instead but lifting like this right and then you see how much more like i i have a lot more like control and um I can act, I have more leverage over the keys, which means that I can place my fingers correctly this way. And you can see how I can actually reach further. And that's just because my thumb is further back. So I hope that makes sense. So for me, it certainly does help me reach the low C. There would be a B here if this had a B foot joint, but I hope that makes sense to you, yeah. Let's go back to our, Ooh, hello. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers your question there. Uh, if I was to play a different wind instrument besides the flute, what would it be? A different wind instrument? Okay. Wind instrument. Does recorder count? Probably the recorder, if that if that that counts, right? Because realistically, that would be the only other wind instrument that I would play. I would say the recorder. Yeah, I think Team Recorder would really love that answer. Uh, <laughs> um, Magic Monkey, you definitely said the same thing. Well, this is definitely harder. <laughs> For Charles of Mana. Um, if the flute didn't exist, would I still have become a musician but with a different uh, instrument? Like, oh, if the flute didn't exist at all? Hmm. I wonder. Because let's say that only the recorder um, existed. I don't know if I would have fallen in love with it as much. So I would say no, I probably would not have become a musician because I wasn't even gonna become a musician anyway, even with the flute existing and me playing the flute a lot. I was originally going to become a visual artist. And so 
um, you know, like I, I only became a musician because the art, the visual artist lifestyle scared me off a little bit. Um, it seemed a little bit lonely, too lonely uh, for me, for the likes of me, and um, a little bit too weird, if that makes sense. Um, and for me, okay. And um, yeah, I just, I just didn't, um, I didn't find myself enjoying the prospect of becoming a professional artist right a professional visual artist so the next best thing was to become a musician which of course ended up becoming the best thing for me um but yeah you never know guys you never know were there times that i wanted to quit when i was a kid um not when i was a kid but definitely when i was in late high school and i definitely had thoughts of it while i was in music school um, the thing that kept me going, um, I think was more so the camaraderie with other musicians in orchestra and in my wind quintet. Um, those were the people who kept me going. Like if I gave up the flute, I would be giving them up. So, and I felt that I couldn't afford that because I, I loved playing with them too much you know so uh, but definitely not when I was a kid when I was a kid it was uh, like you know the flute is me and I am the flute and uh, completely obsessed with the flutes and yeah you know so um, yeah no no way no way that I would have wanted to quit when I was a kid but definitely when I was older yeah um, my favorite ornamentation. Uh, that's a good question, Magic Monkichi. Uh, my favorite ornamentation. Probably, um, I like those, like, quick blips, if that makes sense. You know, they go, pyong, pyong, eh, 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 eh. you know, like those types of ornaments. So, I mean, technically one of them is more like an appoggiatura and the other one is more like a mordant or like a single trill. But I, I kind of loop all of them into sort of one group of ornamentation. I call them the blips, the fast blips. So I like fast blips, okay? So, you know, quick, um, you know, quick appoggiaturas, quick trills, quick mordants. You know, that kind of thing. Or like very quick turn, you know, like that kind of thing I find very sensual and like fun, you know. Um, let's see. Kane, you're having, you're having huge trouble with embouchure shifts. In order to change registers, they're pretty big movements. You don't know if it's me or the head joint. Um, probably the head joint. Um, so, um, what I've noticed is that for most people, you favor one part of your mouth. So you either favor the back of your mouth or you favor the front of your mouth. Um, I am a front player. So the new head joint that I got only utilizes the first one third one third one fourth ish of my mouth and so it makes everything a joke in terms of like flexibility because i don't have to move very far um but definitely a lower model instrument will have a much larger range of shifting um and so i definitely feel that on this flute um like I can feel myself shifting way further than on the head joint that I just bought. So um, not that you can't make it sound good, but you can make it sound good, but you, you may not be comfortable. Does that make sense? So I would say that the big movements probably has more to do with your flute than you. Um, 
Yeah, but you will favor certain parts of your mouth. That's the part that you have to keep in mind. So that's the part that is just you. You might favor, right? So I have some students who favor the back half of their mouth. I have some students that favor the front half. So that's why I tend to kind of like very generalized, in a very generalized way, somewhat categorize people as like, are you a back player or are you a front player, right? So uh, a very interesting thing that happened while I was um, uh, uh, reviewing the head joint that I ended up buying, um, I reviewed a similar head joint later on in that stream, which was silver with grenadilla wood. And I felt like that head joint was almost identical in feeling to the head joint that I ended up buying, except that the range was not in the front third of the mouth, but more like in the middle to the back, like somewhere around here. So if you're a back player, you would love that head joint because in order to play really low notes, you don't have to go really far forward, like at all. You're like, you're still like pretty much in the middle of your mouth at that point, or like one third the way into your mouth. So that would work well with back players. Um, so I thought that was really interesting because then that means that, you know, like when you're working on a lower model flute, what you want to do is figure out what the flute wants out of you. And then you figure out which, like, which range, like which octave are you the most comfortable in, right? Because whichever octave you're the most comfortable in, um, based on what you have to do to play that flute, you can kind of identify which part of your mouth you favor. So I hope that answers your question, Kane. Yeah. Have I seen the flute with a head joint with a reed that makes it sound like a dizu? There is a flute head joint, like a Western flute head joint that does that. That's pretty cool. I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Mm, that is really cool. Okay, I'm just uh, scrolling back up because my thing went all the way down. Um, so let's see. Um... Did the Golden Flute Concerto have those E7s? No, they did not. That, that's Piazzolla. The Historic du Tango. Hey, Mari, how are you doing? <laughs> you left and came back. Um, we all know the piccolo is the best instrument ever. <laughs> Darcy. Oh, you. Um, can I give you guys a tip for those who have difficulties reaching F sharp third octave? Okay. Uh, I'm going to guess it's because your flute wants you to do it quite far back in the back of your mouth. Um, so I, I'm i testing out a theory right now, and since you brought up the subject, I will just share it with you right now. I think it's a great way to end off this stream. Um, if you have a low nose bridge like mine, you see how low mine is? It's so low, it's basically non-existent, okay? I'm Asian. What do you expect, okay? Now... If you have a low nose bridge, I am realizing that for some reason, it's easier to control the like the placement of the uh, airstream in your mouth by thinking cool air versus warm air. So the, the lower the note is, the cooler you want your airstream to be. It's kind of like you're blowing on hot soup, right? If you blow on hot soup, you'll realize that you're starting the rushing air right behind your lips, right? and your jaw is jutted forward a little bit, okay? And then when you warm up your hands and you go, right, you'll realize you're starting the air further back in your mouth, okay? So if you're like me, you have a low nose bridge, okay? You wanna think more cool air versus warm air to navigate from low notes into high notes, which means that that high F sharp will use very warm air. So you'll feel like you're playing into the flute by going, but with a flute embouchure, okay? And that helps that F sharp third octave come out really nicely. Now, if you have a high nose bridge, okay? I'm experimenting with my students right now and so far it's worked on everyone. Uh, if you have a high nose bridge, okay? Like it comes out quite a bit up here, okay? You actually wanna play more with your jaw placement, but you do the same thing. So. For low notes, your jaw protrudes further out and you'll actually feel it changing the airstream inside of your mouth. 
Now, does this happen to me? No, it doesn't. If, if I just, you know, jut my jaw forward and back, it does not actually fundamentally change the behavior of the airstream. But I noticed that all of my students with high nose bridges, if they change their jaw placement, it does fundamentally change the behavior of the airstream inside of their mouth. So for low notes, you jut your jaw further and further out. The higher you go, the more you retract your jaw. I learned this from Marcel Moyes' De La Sonorite book. He talks about this jaw movement and he, if you look at him, he's, he's European. So he has, you know, a much higher nose bridge than what I have. Okay. So, um, that is my tip. So Leonardo, I'm not sure if you have a high nose bridge or a low nose bridge, but based on whichever one you are, try that out and see if it helps that F sharp third octave come out better. Okay. So based on your... I don't know the science behind it. Please don't ask me about that. But um, I've just noticed this among my students. Um, so uh, people with low nose bridges, if you try the jaw thing, it kind of works, but not really, okay? If you do more warm air versus cool air, then it immediately works. But the opposite is true for people with high nose bridges. So people with high nose bridges, if I tell you to do just warm air versus cool air, it kind of works, but not really. But the moment you play with your jaw, the jaw placement, it immediately works. But it's the same idea. Low notes are forward, high notes are back. Okay, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Favorite brass instrument? Probably the French horn. Freaking love the French horn. I love that sound, man. You know? Good French horn solo can make you cry. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you guys. Have I heard of the cobra ring? No, I haven't. And I'm very curious now. I would love to look that up. I'm gonna guess I have to write flute. Oh. That is, oh, that's, that's really interesting. That is very cool. Oh, so it, you, you wear the ring and it holds the flute for you. That is really cool. Thank you for sharing that with me. I did not know. Huh, cause I use the finger port. Cause the reason I use the finger port is not for this reason, which is this reason the cobra ring basically holds the flute for you. But I actually need some height off of the flute. So uh, again, it's because my hands are small and my fingers are short and whatever. So um, if I, you know, here, if I don't have this on here, it smashes my this part of my hand against the flute and then it um you know all the rest of my fingers are a little bit lower down but if i have this on like that um it lifts my hand up and over the keys much more so that's kind of what i that's why i i have a thumb uh, finger port instead but I can see how that would be very useful for some people. Thank you for letting me know about that. Huh. A, can I recommend a tin whistle maker? I'm sorry, I cannot because I have not done any research in that arena. So I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. Um, Jaden, you're gonna get a thumb port now, lovely. Have I tried the Alexander technique? I have not, only because lessons are so darn expensive. 
I'm being completely honest with you. That is the only reason why I haven't tried it. It's just the expense. So, um, but I have learned two things. One is balancing your head over your like neck so that you're not like holding it up with your neck. So I learned that because we had like like a like half of a free lesson um, when I was in school. And then the other thing that they taught us was to lie on the floor with your knees bent and then your head on like a book or something and lay there for 20 minutes and then your spine will essentially expand and realign so those are the two things i learned and that's all i know um but and the only reason why i haven't taken more alexander technique classes is just because the lessons are very very expensive so yeah um Miguel is asking about the embouchure crisis. If I wanted to give up at that time, yes, I did. 100% I did. But I think it was more, um, I'm just very stubborn. I'm very stubborn. And I was just like, I want to be able to do this by the end of two weeks. So by sheer force of will, I just, I, I kind of became competitive with myself, if that makes sense. But I did entertain the idea of giving up. Yes, absolutely, I did. Uh, if I could eat dinner with one composer, dead or alive, who would it be? Um, if I also know how to speak Japanese. Um, uh, Nobuo Uematsu, I believe is his name. Um, uh, one of the composers for uh, Final Fantasy. Um, I think uh, I also would love to have dinner with the, um, there's a, a female composer for Final Fantasy as well. Um, I believe she wrote all the music for Final Fantasy 15. And I think I would love to talk to her about, um, you know, like, w what is it like being a, a composer in, in such a male dominant, um, uh, you know, uh, area of work, you know? Um, like, I... I have entertained that thought before of like, man, it would be so cool to like have a conversation with her, you know? Yeah, I forget her name, but um, let's look it up. Final Fantasy. Um, 15 composer. Yoko Shimomura. Yes, that's her. Um, yeah, so I, I would... Because I love her music. Oh my gosh, her Final Fantasy XV music is so good. Um, and yeah, like I would love to n just talk with her about what it's like, you know? Yeah. What's the most special flute that I've ever seen? Probably that, um, the one that I kind of fell in love with. That It was a Brannon called, it was a, it's called a Kingma style flute where it had quarter tone holes. That was cool, man. That was really cool. It was also extremely expensive. I believe the price that they quoted me was $38,000 for that flute. And that was like more than 10 years ago. So I, I can't even imagine how expensive it is now. Um, Claire, you just hit 1.7 followers on TikTok. That's fantastic. Um, you totally move your jaw now that you think about it, Magic Monkichi. Yeah. So you guys are are like, I see that you guys are kind of thinking about your nose bridge now, right? It's it's so weird, isn't it? Like I don't know what it is that causes that. Kind of correlation but yeah it's so interesting all right guys i took a look at the time and i really need to get going because i'm going to teach a lesson and then i will be back again on stream but over on twitch okay so um i love you guys very very much please stay happy healthy and safe thank you so much for joining me today it was really lovely to be able to you know, try this out successfully too and play a lot of music with you guys and just chat. This is so great. So um, I love y'all very much. Please stay happy, healthy, and safe. I will see you guys again in another stream. 
Um, I am planning on streaming at the same time again next week. It seems that Thursdays at 1.30 for some reason are really good for streaming here. So I'm trying to keep to that schedule and seeing how my teaching schedule can work around it. So far it's working around it really well. So we might keep this time guys. We might keep this time. Anyway, I need to go. So I love you guys very much.